Good morning, friends. Oh, you guys might not know it, but it is a long time no see. And holy shit, do I have some updates for you guys. I mean, if you follow me on Instagram, you definitely know what's been going on. But I wanted to catch up my YouTube fam because I haven't vlogged in like two or three weeks now because my life has been a chaotic fucking mess everything has just been going bad it's been so chaotic over here in my little corner of the world knock on wood now that things are finally starting to kind of turn around and smooth out a little bit i'm feeling ready to start kind of getting back to my normal routine and just getting back on track so i thought what better time to vlog than filming me getting back on track after pure chaos after a really big slump my mental health has been so bad we'll we'll get into it we'll talk about it throughout the vlog but um this vlog is going to be me getting my life on track and updating you guys on everything crazy that's been happening so i missed you guys so much and i'm so ready to catch up so first things first My bathroom is currently off limits for my cats and everything because, as you can see, hi buddy, how are you doing this morning? We're currently fostering a cat that Chris found in the storm drain. This is Earl. Hi Earl. He is semi-feral slash just completely unsocialized pretty sure he's lived outside his entire life we found him in not the best state it's been a week and a half well actually it's been basically two weeks now that we've had him and it has been a roller coaster let me tell you guys i've never rescued a cat before guys i don't know what the fuck i'm doing um but it's been quite the challenge it's been really really hard and uh i'm starting to finally see the light at the end of the tunnel he has a vet appointment um, I had to contact a feral rescue type of group here in St. Louis because literally no one else would help me. I did ask for donations and, you know, people have helped out that way, but even getting him into a vet is really, really hard given that he is kind of feral. So everything is finally working out and I'm feeling great, but it's been, it's been crazy having him he is sweet he's not aggressive or mean or anything he's just extremely scared and a little bit traumatized so trying to socialize him has been really difficult just you know the only space i have for him is here in the bathroom he does have um behind the door here he has his food and water bowls he has his litter box in the closet he has his crate but ever since i combed him out for fleas the last time he's not been interested in going back in his crate for some reason so um, he's just been sleeping under the toilet for the last, like, day and a half. Um, but his diarrhea has slowed down. Um, I mean, he's still having really loose poops, but it's actually in the litter box. But he was having, like, multiple diarrhea accidents a day in the tub on top of using the litter box. So, it's definitely getting a little bit better. He is a sleepy boy right now. It's just, you know, obviously not the most ideal for us to have him because we already have two cats socializing him with us as humans is already hard enough let alone that socializing him with two cats would be really hard and i more so am worried that like my cats wouldn't do very well with us bringing another cat in katie got really really um stressed out and even got sick whenever we adopted sir prince and i really can't go through that with him again because he is a senior cat now um and he's already dealing with his own issues with like the over grooming that i've mentioned before which you know once all this gets settled down, I'm going to be taking Kitty to the vet ASAP just to get, like, blood work done, make sure that he's super healthy, and then we'll need to get Sir Prince in pretty soon for a checkup as well. Um, but yeah, I just, it would have been too much. And then, you know, we could have tried to risk it, but we're technically only allowed to have two pets in this apartment. And um, I just, yeah, I really can't risk losing our home or even having that threatened. So... I don't know it's just it's been really hard and making a decision and just doing the work it's, it's all been hard that's all i can really say anyways that's the update on that can you believe that we've had a third cat in our bathroom for two weeks now that's fucking insane what am i doing literally what am i doing <laughs>
<laughs> okay, I need to go to the bathroom, um, and then we'll keep catching up on other things. Okay, so as I mentioned, I've been in a mental slump, and the biggest indicator of that is my house, because I'm a very clean and organized and tidy person, but when I'm not doing well and I'm not taking care of myself, my house is a fucking disaster. I've been trying to keep up with it, but like, for example, look at the state of our bedroom. Realistically, this is not that bad. I just have... A big pile of clothes here, an even bigger pile of clothes here. That's all clean. That's all clean. I just haven't put it away. The bed's not made. I have not been making that every day like I like to. I have like a whole pile of my makeup stuff from when I did my best friend's makeup. I did bring all of my plants inside if you guys haven't seen that already. My Depop station is like fine. I do have all of this stuff to list though, and then I'm saving these boxes in case I need them for orders for either bundles or shipping shoes out. And then, you know, we just have like food and shit on our nightstands because we eat in bed all the time. But yeah, I mean, really, this could be worse. I would really like to wash our sheets soon. I just need to like vacuum in here and stuff, so... You know, I'm, I'm working on it. This area is a little bit of a mess. I feel like it's just overflowing with shit. 
I started trying to clean out this closet the other day because there's just stuff everywhere it feels. Like I still have this from when we were supposed to have our last camping trip and that did not end up happening. So this is like all of our toiletries that I still haven't put away. We got a half eaten granola bar on the table. I have this whole pile of pillows with clothes on top of course because why wouldn't I? Uh, but the pillows are usually in our linen closet in the bathroom as well as that big bag of blankets because those are for our camping trips but I like to keep them upstairs because for one it's a lot cleaner that way and for two if we ever have people stay over it's easy to grab but I can't put it back in the bathroom because I had to completely rearrange in there. I had to take everything out that the cat could possibly get to so that he wouldn't break stuff or just like get it dirty. And I haven't been able to put all this back. Um, since he is getting picked up tonight, that is my goal is to get the bathroom a little bit, you know, more situated. The living room is fine just because we don't spend that much time in here and I keep it clean whenever I do hair. Chris is pretty good about keeping his area for fingerboarding pretty clean. We do have this desk. We found it in a dumpster and you know it's really cool and everything but it's just like a junk collector at this point. I have all these books that we've thrifted that don't fit on these shelves. We really 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 need to get another bookshelf in here. I have an extra lamp that doesn't have a space right now. It's just like everything is a fucking mess. Instruments shoved in the corner. I mean I can't people. This is so much. Thousands of tears later. Hello guys. There's Boots. I've got Kitty walking in circles around me. Um, so <laughs> I had started to try to film this video like last week and I kid you guys not, it was like the first day that I was starting to feel good and like things were maybe going a little bit more back to normal. And in the middle of filming that video, I got a phone call from my landlords saying that they're planning on selling our building. And um, they did reassure me that my lease will be honored, but my lease is up in February and it's currently November. So that doesn't give me much time. I mean, it's better than like if somebody were to buy the building, you know, tomorrow and say, oh, you have 30 days to move out. And then we're scrambling and we're just like absolutely fucked, but it's still just like not that much time. I'm in absolutely no way prepared to move right now. I feel like for a while now I've been going kind of back and forth on whether or not I would want to move. And you know, we're so comfortable here and I like this apartment. I really don't have many complaints at all about this place. It would take a lot to motivate me to actually move because I've just moved so many times in my life and... You know, like I said, we're comfortable here. Like, we haven't, like, majorly outgrown this space or anything like that. So it doesn't feel, like, super necessary to me to, like, pack up and move in February. You know what I mean? And I, I had fully come to terms with the idea that we were going to be renewing our lease at least one more time. And now, if we're going to be able to do that, it's completely up in the air and out of my control. And... I, as you can imagine, have not been taking that news well at all. I am just such a naturally anxious person and I don't do well um, when things are not in my control, <laughs> which sounds a little psychotic, but it's just true. So I've just not been having a good time mentally at all. And I low-key fell into a pretty bad depression for quite a few days where I just like didn't even want to get out of bed like I got worse than I was before I had started filming this video it's just been a really rough time um so on some other updates really fast we tried to take our last camping trip of the year and I did not film that because we ended up not doing it because it was like right as like we found that gray cat on Tuesday and we were supposed to go camping that weekend. Um, we still drove all the way to Southern Illinois, even though I, there was something in my gut that was like, just telling me like, this is not, like, don't do it. But you know, because it was our last one plan of the year, yada, 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 like I didn't want to cancel it. I had somebody who was coming and checking on all three of the cats every single day, multiple times a day even. And like, it was fine in that regard, but there was just like, I think, you know, in my mind, I was like, oh, I'm just so stressed out with this cat and like, 
whatever. I'm not gonna be able to relax and have fun, so we just shouldn't go. Although I don't necessarily regret going because we had a really good time still. So we drove down to Southern Illinois and our plan originally was Friday. We were gonna stay the night with Chris's mom. Next morning I wake up and I'm just like, I'm just not feeling it. Like I just don't think I wanna camp. I was very happy to be down in Southern Illinois. I always feel amazing when we're down there. Um, and I was really enjoying spending time with his mom and just like, we haven't had a day like this in so long where we would drive down to Southern Illinois, spend the night at his mom's house and then just drive around and like explore all the different towns and stuff. Like for the last few years, if we go to Southern Illinois, we kind of like pop in and say hi to his mom, but then keep going the rest of the way to the woods. And then we're just like in the woods the whole time. So we decided to not go camping because neither of us were like fully feeling it we ended up staying the night with his mom again and then coming home a day early on sunday we leave sunday afternoon and um we're just barely over the halfway point and chris switched the car over to me and i was driving for maybe 20 minutes and the car broke down in the middle of the highway I had to veer off so i had to call my mom and have her rescue us she got our car towed to a town like 30 miles away closer to home and we left our car there we did an overnight drop off um called the mechanic the next morning and he says mm, i'm backed up for two weeks so i'm not gonna be able to get to it for i don't know how long and we're like we can't just not have a car for two weeks while it sits at a mechanic like that's insane so then my mom called and got a towed again to another mechanic like 10 miles closer to home and they luckily were able to get to it like the next day and turns out that yes it was in fact our spark plug misfiring which is something that we've known about for a while i don't know i don't want to ramble on about the car for too long but basically we got it into the second mechanic he was able to look at it he changed all our spark plugs but he said that he found antifreeze on one of the spark plugs so that means it's leaking from somewhere and getting in the cylinder which is obviously a really big deal and he didn't look further into it to properly diagnose it but he said he thinks that we have a head gasket that is already blown i don't know shit about cars you guys so that's why this has been also extremely stressful for me obviously if it is anything related to the head gasket whether it's already blown whether it's cracked and about to be blown we need to be extremely careful driving a car and we need to start looking into getting a new car and if I'm just being so blunt with you guys, this has been a pretty tough year for us financially. Um, I mean, now that Chris has his new job, things have been a lot better for us. And I've been doing a bit better just like the last like two or three months on money. Um, but I'm still trying to catch up on my bills right now that I've gotten a bit behind on. I do not have money in savings to buy a new car. I, we we were pinching pennies to even get it fixed um and now on top of having to think about buying a new car that needs to happen by like december january and then we're gonna have to move in february i just don't know so i yeah those things combined and then also trying to care for what i now know was a feral cat yes i thought oh he's not aggressive like He's just a scary baby no he was not socialized around humans at all he was feral and i called rescue after rescue after rescue you guys trying to get somebody some sort of shelter to take him in and get him the care he needed and everyone turned me down like i literally lost count of, of how many shelters i either emailed or called or like reached out to like it was ridiculous i posted on every lost and found pet group i could in st louis nobody claimed him in fact, the only lead I got was somebody who lives in the neighborhood we found him in saying that they've seen him around as a stray. So then I started posting in like Facebook rehoming groups, which are not necessarily my favorite thing based on being in them and like, it's it's a little sketchy, I can't lie. Um, but I just knew like we couldn't keep him, especially like once our car broke down, I'm like, there is no way. I can't afford to get this cat the vet care that it needs and then to sit here and spend hour after hour after hour every day trying to socialize him and just work with him like this is just way too much for me and 
you know, and now we're gonna have to think about moving. I was already stressed about getting in trouble for having three cats here. Trying to move to a new place with three cats, impossible. It wouldn't happen. So yeah, I'm like, I need to find this cat at home. No one would claim him there, obviously because he needed so much work. And it was a rescue situation that a shelter should have, you know, taken care of, not like some random person just trying to have a new pet. What? Somebody from a shelter reached out and said that it sounds like this cat is feral. And I was like, yes, it is semi-feral. It's not fully feral. Like, it's not gonna rip your fucking face off if you get near it feral, but like, he's feral. And she said, well, bibs, that's, your, that's why nobody's taking him. You need to get in contact with this feral outreach group of St. Louis. They will assist you with doing TNR and um they might be able to help you out like financially and stuff too and so I did I reached out you know sent my whole little copy and pasted email format they're so funny when I sit on the ground they're like what are you doing but I'm a floor sitter anyways luckily they responded very quickly I got a phone call back from my email and was like yeah you do have a feral cat and unfortunately the best thing to do is to get him neutered and you know get his vaccines and then release him where you found him and this idea did not sit well with me um it really made me sad because I just wanted to find him a home I don't think any cats should live on the street but I also understand that some cats have always lived on the streets and you know he wasn't happy being inside point blank period he wasn't i worked with him for two weeks straight and i don't know he just like like he was fine with me but like we weren't making like progress like you know it was like every day i'd be like oh he did like one tiny little thing and then he would like hiss at me and run around the room and it was like okay well maybe we're not making progress it's just like it was seriously a lot and so after I talked to the first lady at the feral outreach group, she was like, let me contact some of my volunteers and like, I'll get back to you. Well, then I get a text from somebody else. It was like, hey, I have an appointment for a TNR, like neuter and vac situation. If you, you know, if you're interested, let me know. And I was like, well, what's this going to cost me? Because this is my budget. And I swear it was like the miracle that I had been waiting for for two weeks straight. She said actually we have to be the ones to take him i have to come to you get him into a trap and then i have to be the one to take him to the vet and it's completely covered like it's not going to cost you anything like holla freaking luya although this was not my ideal outcome to release him back out onto the streets this is just what had to happen it was literally the only fucking thing I was able to work. She dropped him back off with me for a day and we were the ones to release him since, you know, Chris knew like exactly where he was found. And guys, when I tell you, this cat was running like a track star. He was so happy to be released. I've never seen a cat like, like, I mean, he ran laps around my bathroom in an angry way, but this was like a happy, like, oh my God, I'm free type of run. And even though in my heart I don't feel like TNR is like the happiest thing, the best, you know, end result, he really was happy. And that's what these people at this TNR group kept telling me was that this is what's best for him. Even though we don't like it, this is what's best for him. And I did get to see that with my own eyes, which gave me a bit of closure, you know? And I just really hope that he is able to uh, sustain himself out there not end up in a sewer drain again, <laughs> not end up, you know, hit by a car or something crazy, but cats have good instincts, he's always lived outside, you know, we don't know why or how he ended up in the storm drain, but we're just happy that we helped him, and now he's fixed, so he can't keep making more stray cats, and, you know, I did what I could for two weeks straight, and now all of that stress is off of my shoulders, he's happier, I'm relieved, you know, it just kind of is what it is. So that's everything with the cat. And now we're just back to focusing on getting a new car, which is like exciting. It's just really stressful. Like I'm definitely like, I'm ready for a new car. I love our car to death. It's lasted us 
amazingly for the last five and a half, six years. And it's gotten us many, many, many places. Like, this has been a fantastic car for us. It's lived a great life. I mean, it was already used when we got it. And we literally drove that thing to the ground. So, love her. Love her work. I'm definitely sad to not have her anymore. But it's also like, well, that just means we get a nicer car. Hopefully. Knock on wood. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And then, as for moving... We don't know. We truly don't know. I'm talking with my mom on some options that we have. I'm looking on Zillow and Facebook Marketplace again constantly every single day for apartment listings, even though it's going to be a minute until we move. And it's also an if we have to move. We really don't know. Um, they could either let us stay but raise our rent. They could tell everybody to move out. It, it's very unknown. I don't want to just sit around and wait to find out you know um but it also is kind of a waiting game like i want to be prepared for the worst but we just aren't going to actually know what's happening until that happens so right now we're just trying to save money um for both a car and moving i have no idea how we're gonna afford both those things but we have to like we literally don't have another choice so that's my whole life update that's what's been going on that is why my mental health has been absolutely trashed in the gutter but i'm i'm feeling a bit better i think i will go ahead and stop filming here i've talked for like 30 minutes straight to you guys but i just wanted to be honest with like what's going on and everything um because i couldn't just leave the video where it was i barely filmed anything <laughs> anyways um thank you guys so much for watching this video even though this was not necessarily the happiest video um i'm just I am happy to say that I'm finally feeling a little bit better, I'm feeling a little more like myself, um, and I'm just ready to tackle this all and get through it because it's literally all you can do. I had my moment where I was sad and depressed about it, and now I just have to just go at it strong. So, um, yeah, thank you guys so much for spending this time here listening to me ramble about the shit show that is my life because i swear when it rains it pours that is always true for me it's always something for us it's always something i swear i was just talking about how grateful i am for where we're at you know um because when we thought we had a car problem then we didn't and like chris started his new job i was doing really good and i was like wow we're in a really good spot and then all of this happened so yeah, um, but you know, it's all gonna work out one way or another. It always does. It's just not fun to get through this stuff, but we will. There will be another side to this, and uh, hopefully both uh, car and living situation, we just end up with something better, or at least with living, we just get to stay here. That would be best case scenario. We just get to get a new car and stay in this apartment for another year. So, obviously, I will keep you guys updated as we find out more. I'm going to try to be better about filming. I've had, by the time this video is up, all my other videos will be posted. But I have been so behind on content with all of this going on. I had, like, three videos pre-filmed that I just, like, didn't touch. I got one of them up by the time I'm filming this, but I still have two more to edit through. So, um, I'm going to try really hard after this video is up to stay on a consistent filming and uploading schedule like I have been all year. I've been doing so good, so I hate that I'm not on my shit right now. Thank you guys for being patient and bearing with me and for still being here, even though I haven't been very consistent and I have not been doing good mentally. Um, I love you guys so much. You guys are for real my besties. And I'm just so honored that you guys actually like show up and watch my videos and care about my life at all. It's kind of crazy, but... I love you guys so, so much, and I will see you guys in a video very soon, I promise. Bye.